There's a reason our trash bins fill up with all kinds of unfinished story ideas. Plotting is really hard. Okay, there are a lot of reasons this happens, but today I'm talking about plotting, so just go with it. When writers seek help with their plot, one of the first methods you'll probably find is Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. But there are a lot of other ways to structure plots, some of which are a bit simpler. Dan Harmon's Story Circle draws inspiration from Campbell's approach, but simplifies it into just eight simple steps. Harmon likes to talk about this plotting method using examples from Rick and Morty or Community, since those are some of the shows he's written for. But I'm feeling nostalgic today. Shaun of the Dead is one of my favorite movies, and it actually follows the story circle pretty well. So let's have a look and see what it can teach us about plotting our own stories. Hopefully it can help us plan ahead a bit better and create a few less uh, final drafts. First, a quick warning that this video will be absolutely full of spoilers for Shaun of the Dead. I generally try to avoid them, but we have to talk about the entire plot of this movie for the conversation to work. So... Harmon's eight-step process begins with Step 1, a character you can identify with. We don't have to necessarily like your protagonist, we just need to connect with them in some way. This step is also sometimes referred to as a place of comfort. It's when we're introduced to most of our main characters, and we get to see what normal looks like for them. In Shaun of the Dead, this is pretty well summed up by Shaun hanging out at the Winchester pub, then having a routine day with his friend Ed, going to work, making plans to visit his parents, and trying to set up dinner reservations for him and his girlfriend Liz. But this state of normal can only last so long in a zombie rom-com, so soon we need to wrap it up and move on to Step 2, A Need or Desire Your hero is incomplete. They need to rescue a loved one, or win a tournament, or escape capture. By now we should have a good idea about the kind of story you're telling and the main character's primary motivations. At this point in Shaun of the Dead, Shaun's struggle between a lack of motivation and a desire to do more with his life catches up to him. He's been complacent, unable to follow either path. It's a dilemma perfectly summarized by his flatmates Ed and Pete. Ed represents his carefree and careless nature. Pete represents ambition and success, and the two do not get along, and Sean is always stuck in the middle. After his girlfriend breaks up with him, it's Pete and Sean's desire to get back with Liz who really gets him to realize he's got to work on himself, or he'll be stuck in the rut Liz is trying to avoid. Which leads us to... Step 3. Crossing a Threshold your protagonist has accepted the call to adventure and begins their quest, literally or figuratively, into an unfamiliar world. They're actively going after whatever it is they need or whatever they think they need. At this point, Sean knows he's got the change, but he hasn't yet figured out how to break his routine. Briefly, we see him go about his normal morning again, but things are out of place. People are missing, and those who remain are mostly shuffling down the street like zombies, because they are zombies. He's crossed the threshold. He just doesn't really notice until he and Ed are personally attacked. And hold to them! Ed, just get her off me! Jeez! Ugh. So now they know zombies are a thing. Sean develops a third need here. On top of sorting out what he wants in life and reconnecting with Liz, he also wants to protect everyone he cares about from the zombies. But of course, that's easier said than done. Step 4, A Road of Trials This section can also be summed up as a period where your characters have to adapt to the new situation. There's obstacles between them and their goals which they need to overcome. Sean makes plans to help his parents and Liz get somewhere safe. The Winchester seems like a good spot with its heavy doors and, well, probably just the fact they feel safe there. So he and Ed get into a car and collect everyone to take them there. Remember, Liz dumped Sean because he was complacent, but now that people he loves are in danger, he's suddenly taking initiative and doing whatever he can to protect them. 
They make mistakes along the way as they learn to navigate this new zombie-filled world. But they work together to overcome each issue they face, with Sean leading the action now. Next up, step five. They get what they want. However, getting what they want isn't always a positive experience. Your protagonist might find that what they wanted wasn't actually that great, that they've been lied to, or what they wanted doesn't last. In episode one of House of the Dragon, Viserys wants a son more than anything. Balon is born by the end of the episode, but the cost is immense and the victory short-lived. In Sean's case, nothing is without complications. He finally has the direction and motivation he's needed this whole time, but he only got it during the zombie apocalypse. They make it to the Winchester pub, but it's not nearly as safe as they hoped. He gets Liz back, but... Step six, paying a heavy price. It's almost impossible to discuss success without the cost paid for it. The best examples of a heavy price push your protagonist to the brink. They may have gotten what they wanted, but they lost a loved one, are forced to question their morals, or a secret is exposed. These are consequences for everyone's actions, but especially the protagonist. Sean sees his mother turn into a zombie, and he has to put her down to save those who remain. And that's only the beginning of when the costs pile up. Things get a lot worse before they get better, but they do get better. In step seven, return to comfort, your protagonist returns to the familiar world. In Sean's case, that's when the military shows up to save the day. Only he and Liz are left, but the zombies are being eliminated or captured. A sense of normalcy and security returns. But at this point, can anything really be normal again? Finally, step eight, change. The experience has changed your protagonist. They've learned and grown from the experience. Sometimes this is when the final showdown occurs. One last battle between the protagonist and antagonist. Sometimes it's just a reflection of your protagonist applying what they've learned earlier in the story. This is called the animator. You have to go watch Daredevil. It's so good. It has all the things. Watch it. Go, go, go. In Shaun of the Dead, it's more of the latter. A few months later, Sean is more motivated, has learned how to make hard choices, and he's back with Liz. And while he couldn't protect his best friend from being infected, he does keep a zombie Ed close by. In this case, the world has changed as well. We see Liz flipping through channels on the TV, watching clips of how people are living alongside zombies now, featured in shows, news stories, charities, or how they're using zombies as workers. They're just kind of part of society now. However, we shouldn't always follow the story circle to the letter. Even Harmon's own writing doesn't always follow it perfectly. I like Shaun of the Dead as an example because it roughly follows each step, but not exactly. Shaun gains a third need late around step three or four. Steps five and six are long and intertwined in a really interesting way that wouldn't happen if its writers had simply put one step after the other. If you want an example of a story that does follow the framework exactly, check out episode 202 of Rick and Morty. It's an example Harmon himself uses when talking about the story circle. Check the description for a link to that video. Templates like this can be really helpful guides. They can help you identify quirks in your plot, like if you're missing a step from your story, or if you've added extra steps. These aren't inherent problems, but it's worth asking yourself why differences like these might exist. However, at the end of the day, every story is unique. This is just one of many ways to write them. Thanks for watching.